Hey everybody, Matt here for AVC and welcome back. Today we're going to be checking out the vans of Overland Expo Mountain West. Let's take a look. I'm here with Nick from Overland Expo and uh, Nick, tell me what is the purpose of Overland Expo? Overland Expo is to inspire, inform, and get folks ready for their own adventures. We have everything from hundreds of session hours of classes, which is a real distinguishing feature of our, our show, and then over almost 300 uh, folks here on uh, brands on site, and we're going to have uh, tens of thousands of folks coming through the gates. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Let's take a look. I'm here with Sean from Black Rhino Wheels, and he's going to tell us a little bit about all-wheel drive options for your Ford Transit. So we've got two different offsets that you can use on, on all the transits and the off-road overlanding vans. You can do a plus 38, you can do the plus 52. Uh, we offer a whole line of wheels to choose from, different finishes from your bronze to your matte gun metals, the all black, even some of the desert sand stuff that you can get out there with those. Cool. How do they find help to select what tires right for them or what wheels so, right for them? So what I'd recommend is going to blackrhinowheels.com and selecting, putting in your vehicle on the fabricator and it'll pull up, you know, ask you if you want to, if it's stock or if it's lifted or modified, and then you can put in there and it'll take you to a link of exactly what wheels we offer for that vehicle for specifically to that, to that application. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Sean. No problem. All right. We'll see you around. Thank you. I'm here with Chris from Thule and uh, Chris is going to show us some of their products they have for vans. Yeah. Take it away, Chris. Yeah, definitely. So first off is our Thule hideaway awning. This is one of three awnings that we offer in our line that will work on a host of uh, vans like this, this Sprinter here, or work on passenger cars and SUVs. But what's great about this Thule hideaway awning is it comes in three different sizes and you can mount it directly to the van or you can mount it to a rack system on the van. This one in particular is a rack system. So you have T-slot on the backside and you can pretty much put the hardware wherever you want, depending on where the crossbars or where the attachment points are for the roof rack. Um, and as you can see, it's a crank out awning that you can adjust based on the, the distance you want off the vehicle. So you can bring it in nice and tight, or if you've got a bright sunny day like it is today, you can bring it out all the way and then adjust the height accordingly. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, definitely. I'm here with Dennis from Travoy, and uh, Dennis is going to tell us a little about what they offer to the van market. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Dennis. Our facility is in Henderson, Nevada. Uh, we manufacture floor systems, uh, seat systems, uh, and we do full van conversions in Henderson, Nevada. Uh, our seats, uh, seats and floors are all DOT, pull tested, uh, legal. Uh, but we offer other parts. We, have, we offer seat swivels, as you see here, for the Ford, for the Sprinter 906, for the 7, the Metris, and even for the Dodge ProMaster. Uh, what can you tell us about your seat system? Uh, so, yeah, our seat system, if you'd like to take a look at it, um, it's a basically it's our, our seat bed is either a two-seater or a three-seater bench that converts into a bed. And then this allows you to slide the seat forward or backwards and then lock it in place. And that's locked in place. Yeah, and then we just have, we have track cap in here right now, but you can remove the track cap and you can slide the seat all the way forward and have full cargo area in the back. When it's in seat mode, it has three point shoulder harness, it has ISO fix for car, for car seats. Uh, and then yeah, within 30 seconds, it can convert into a bed. We got single seats that are also uh, able to adjust on the L-Track so you can put them in multiple positions. They got four position swivels, so they swivel all around uh, and then just unclip. If you don't need the seats in there, you pull them out. If you need extra seats in, you just put them back in. Uh, as these swivels age, what is a, something someone can do to like keep them from squeaking over time or something like Is there like a lube point or something like that or like anything they can add to it? Yeah, so I mean, obviously the, we, we sell replacement parts for this. So if this polyurethane guide wears out, you can replace these if they crack, but I always just do like a dry lube on here. So you yeah. can spray a dry lube on this thing and just swivel it around and it usually keeps them quiet. Yeah, so yeah, I always just, just say, just use a dry lube. Um, you don't want to use anything like petroleum based or anything like that. Okay. Uh, anything that'll eat away on the plastic. Ah, okay. Um, That's good advice. So yeah, dry, dry lube is always good for it. Okay. So like a silicone spray? Yeah. Silicone spray is perfect. Perfect. I'm here with Hal from All American Axe Company. And Hal, what is the perfect axe for a van lifer? Well, it depends on what kind of a van you've got. Okay. If you've got one of these big overlanding rigs, then you, we actually have an axe called the Overlander. Oh, man. Okay. okay. So this is a, a mat, an axe that we hand forge in Colorado Springs in the world's largest blacksmithing school. Awesome. It's made out of uh, 4140 steel, which is an American-made steel. It's a hand-picked furniture-grade um, hickory that we get from Tennessee, which uh -huh. is environment sustainably grown in the U.S. And then we have it forged by uh, master blacksmiths who, uh, in our blacksmith shop, we have five uh, History Channel Forge and Fire champions and four oh, yeah. more competitors. Awesome. Um, that is Kilroy's workshop that we're located in. And then we finish it off with a signature black walnut wedge. Oh, 
So it's the finest axe you can get in the world. Awesome. The okay. Europeans had a couple of year, hundred year head start, so I yeah. had to outdo them on every level. Well, that's great. So, yeah. um, are you doing a varnish on the handle or is it linseed oil? So, yeah, boiled linseed oil. Okay. So two coats of boiled linseed oil on this. And then we do wax the heads so that they um, they won't rust on you. Okay. And we actually leave them raw forged, which is what this finish is, so that you can see that they're hand forged. That makes each one unique. Cool. We wax them and then boiled linseed oil. Yeah. yeah. And, and how big is this, like a 20? This is a 24 inch, 24? which is the overlander. Uh -huh. And then if you don't have the big overlanding rig and you yeah. just have a camp box and you can do the campsite companion. Okay, perfect. And that's a, that's a, a 19 inch handle. So okay. it fits in most camp boxes. Yeah, that's nice. I like and these that are designed to be all around um, heads so they'll They'll you help you limb, clear trees, you can, you can split with them, uh -huh. you can fell with them if you need to for a part of your uh, recovery rig, uh -huh. etc. And then we go into specialty axes, like this is a fireside splitter. Okay. It's designed specifically for cutting cordwood. That's what it's designed to do. Okay. Uh -huh. So I, I engineer the heads for modern day use cases makes sense. Uh, versus 1870 oh, use cases so or something. Right, yeah, I don't need a specific axe just to chop down trees, like yeah. if I'm just splitting stuff I bought. Exactly. Okay. And then it uh, looks like you have tomahawks too? Tomahawks are made for us by a, you know, family on the East Coast called the McEwen family, which is three generations of blacksmiths. Okay. And what's and the difference between a tomahawk and an axe? The main difference is a tomahawk has this straight edge right here coming off at a 90 degree from the handle uh -huh. and that makes it a tomahawk whereas an axe has the head integrated in with the handle okay. whereas all the working end of the tomahawk comes off the 90 degrees so you have the pole or the blade and the ones we make are either in pure native american indian influence style like this one which happens to be a peace pipe okay. also so it's <laughs> okay. multifunctional uh -huh. and then uh, and especially depending on what state you live in you it's know right, then it yeah, could be very yeah right at home. then it has multiple functions okay. uh -huh. or we have kind of uh, viking inspired beer ones so if you want one of these in your kit the uh, one of the nice things about them is they're very lightweight so okay. you can see the difference in weight so a lot of times people will use them for backpacking okay. or for bush for bush crafting they'll sure. do that okay. um, um, and then frankly uh, there's no two ways to put it a lot of things that are tomahawk about is, is a weapon right. <laughs> so if you want to be able to defend yourself against wildlife but you don't want to carry a firearm at least you have a fighting chance okay. you know? oh, I you were so that's um, that's one of the differences where this is pure working and a lot mo almost everybody that buys these wants to use them and work them and that, even though we make them to look like functional art sure. we want them to use them a lot of the tomahawks get collected okay. they can, safe queens or shelf queens yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense so awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, Al. Thank Appreciate you. It. Yep. Hey, knock, knock. Can we check out your rig? Yeah. And uh, right. I'm, I'm Matt. Matt. And Greg. 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 Right, yeah. You want to? Why don't you tell us about your rig? Sure. So, I lived in Australia when I was a teenager. Uh, my dad's in the military. Fell in love with Land Cruiser Series 70s and just tree backs in general. Okay. I just love the concept of them. And so, uh, a little while ago, I found out about the 25-year rule and that you're able to import a vehicle in. I found a company that I trusted to go through in Japan. I started looking at the auction sites and spent a couple months on there, then came across this old girl, this old Japanese fire truck with 7,000 miles on it, awesome. and I said, I have to have it. Yeah. And I told my wife, she said, sure, Greg, because I tend to say random stuff like that all the time. Okay. And she said, sure, Greg. And the next thing she goes or says to me is, uh, why is there a lot of money missing from our account? I said, well, I bought that Japanese fire truck I was telling you about. She said, well, oh, God, God. she thought I got scammed. And so uh -huh. you know, she's like, you know, this matchbox car is going to show up in the mail one right, day. Yep, yep. You know, uh -huh. it showed up, perfect condition, just like they said it would. And then uh, I've just been working on modifying it. And it's still very much work in progress. You know, I, I, I'm trying to do this all myself. I'm not uh, a great fabricator by any means. Okay. I'm just trying to use my imaginations and trying to learn skills as I play with this truck. Yeah, me and my wife, you know, I, I was always a tent camper. I have an old Jeep CJ5. And we'd go up and tent camp in. And my wife is like, well, you know, I need a little more comfort than that and she was trying to talk me into getting like a you know a pop-up camper or yeah. something and I was like I can't I can't do it yeah. I like to disperse camp I like to go somewhere not crazy four-wheeling but somewhere you gotta you know crawl up into a little bit mm -hmm. where there's not a lot of people and so we decided on the rooftop tent model and it's worked out great for us we're both super comfortable in there and then uh, our daughter and our dogs are able to sleep down in the annex okay. and uh you know, relax and feel comfortable. And then we got this this awning, this 270 awning from Ironman, and we love it. Cool. It was a great price and just, you know, really 
opens this up and makes it feel like a living room or a kitchen, you know, and, and it works really good. I'm here with Tom from Kuat, and Tom's going to tell us what's new uh, for the van market with Kuat. Very cool. Okay, so uh, this next spring, uh, we are launching our Piston SR, uh, which stands for Solo Rail. Uh, our Piston Pro X came out uh, not long ago, and the reason it gets its name is because of the Kashima coated pistons uh, that open the dual ratchet arm system. Uh, the rack sits on a T-channel track, so it's easily mounted to like an owl rack like this, rooftop rails, um, or even a hitch accessory, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, the rack does have some security, little cable locks so you can lock your bike, but once you get it up there, these just ratchet in on either tire and hold it tight. Sweet. Yeah. That looks like the perfect rack for the back. It is the perfect rack for the back of the van. Yeah, you get a little bit of uh, one way or the other, depending on how you want to mount bikes up there. So you can stack them kind of close together, do multiples on there. Yep. Uh, yeah, that braille and like the adjustability here. Definitely. Okay. Yep. So you can slide different ways. Cool. But yeah, our hitch mount accessory that goes with it is pretty rad too. I can show you that as well. Yep. So you can actually take this rack off of the roof or off of the back of your van and use it as a single Pretty bike cool. rack yeah. in the hitch. This, so it comes off the roof and then it goes into the hitch mount there. Yeah. Same yeah. features, but in this setting, it'll hold up to like 100 pounds. So a nice heavy e-bike in the hitch will work great there. Uh, the rack, the rack itself will retail for 449 this next spring. Uh, and then the hitch accessory will be in addition to that. Yeah, so kuat.com is the best place for information. Uh, we also have a lot of great retailers around the area. So uh, definitely check them out. But kuat.com is a great place to get started. What's up? Do you have questions? Yeah, I do. Uh, do you want to tell us about something new? I'm Matt. Yeah, I'm Matt. What's up? Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down. Perfect. Just hold it. Uh, I see good. you have a GoFast camper on a Maverick, so we love the stuff. We, like, we love American manufacturing. I think like what you guys are doing is very inspiring. You want to tell us what's up? Yeah, for sure. So the GoFast camper for the Maverick is the first camper for the Maverick, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. It wasn't like a race to market or anything, but we thought that this was a platform that was going to be underutilized. People look at the mini truck in our world and it's sort of anti the trucky bro culture. Okay. But what this does versus you know what most people really need out of their vehicle, yeah. it's so dang capable. I mean, we did throw some ATs on it, some new you know 1552s, which yeah. is sweet. But this thing is a bone stock off-road Maverick. Mm -hmm. um, it's the all-wheel drive. But what's really sweet about this is it's so lightweight. So you're not affecting gas mileage too much. Okay. Um, this thing weighs around 250 pounds. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Super clutch. Uh -huh. So this is the same as our standard size bed. So mini truck to mid-sized truck, you're getting the same platform on top. Okay. The XL is about six inches wider, but this thing runs about like eight feet. So if you're a seven footer with a size 13 foot, you fit just fine in here sleeping. Awesome. Yeah. What's the current lead time as of what's end of August in 2022? Yeah. So if you've been following us like you have, you've yeah. noticed that our lead times have shrunk yeah, absolutely. Yeah. further and further, which is great. So if you were to order one of these puppies today, you would get it first or second week of October. Oh, that's killer. Yeah. Awesome. And the RTT, which is just the obvious rooftop yep. tent portion of it, you can get that shipped in two weeks. If you're looking for us, check us out on our Instagram, which is just GFC underscore USA, because we're made in the US. Um, or you can check out GoFastCampers.com, and uh, we'll have all the specs and everything for the Maverick. Uh, we've got a new blog post and everything. You can catch us in Car and Driver and uh, Gear Junkie as well, if you're looking for more on this Maverick. That's sweet. Excellent. Yeah, camper. dude. Yeah. Thanks very much. No doubt. Cool. Appreciate you, dudes. Yeah. I'm the owner at Boris Campers. Uh, we build manufacture down in Pueblo, Colorado. Oh, sweet. Uh, the camper here that we're looking at is the EOS 12. Uh, EOS is the mother of Boreas okay. Okay. in Greek mythology. Uh -huh. Just put that together. Uh, but this is our hybrid uh, camper. We've been working on this for a number of years and we've just gotten it to pr production uh, here in 2022. Uh, but it's still a compact platform, so. Is it, uh, how many people does it run? <clears throat> so it'll sleep four uh -huh. or five um, with a bunk option. Okay. Uh, so on the right hand side there is the bench that folds down to a double bed. Mm -hmm. Up front is uh, the full queen main sleeping area. Okay. And that one's set up all the time. Yeah. I, I like having the permanent bed that you're not constantly flipping things around. 100% agree. On the left hand side you have a wet bath, so a cassette and shower. Okay. You have 50 gallons of fresh water, cool. heated tanks, uh, so you can winter camp in it. Okay, how do they heat? Uh, so they're ducted from the furnace and then they have heating pads on it. Okay, sweet. Okay. Yeah. So 
Um, <clears throat> comes in about 3,750 pounds. Okay. So typically in this world, we don't have a whole lot of competition in this hybrid world, yeah, but um, the brands that are out there, we're about 1,000 pounds lighter. Okay. Uh, we're using all composite and metal for the construction. Around here you have the outdoor kitchen, three burner stove, uh, sink with hot and cold water here, uh, some storage for pots and pans and silverware. Uh, the pass-through pantry is super handy. Oh, yeah, that's nice. um, so access in and out. Big 270 awning that connects to the door. Little work table here, some speakers. The big 96 liter fridge and freezer here from Truma. We use all Truma products, so Truma AC, furnace, hot water, and refrigerator. Um, and what's nice with this too is you can roll it back in and while you're sitting at the dining room table, you can access it. You lift up the bed platform uh -huh. and grab a beer without having to go outside. Perfect. That's excellent. So this is our Garmin control system. So this is our home page. You can run all your lights. It show, shows uh, amps coming in from the solar, what your battery's at. We've got 40, 46% fresh water. Mm -hmm. Here's our battery at 91% up top. Um, and then you can go through lighting, so toolbox lighting, kitchen lighting, uh, rock lights, entry lights, dimmers on all of them as well. And then you can get into climate control, so the air conditioner, which is a 12-volt off-grid system, um, hot water, furnace, fan. Uh, nice. And all that Truma stuff's integrated. Yeah, so we worked with Truma also to be able to get all this to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, so it's Garmin, Truma. Uh, and us working on it. And then this is the suspension system here, so you can <laughs> set different settings to this. You can have preset ride heights, um, and then it also uh, will auto level for you when you hook up to leave, too, because your camper is always going to be a different weight. You know, you uh -huh. put a bag on this side, but you got a case of beer over on the other side, that trailer is going to. Uh -huh. level it out before you depart as well. That's awesome. Yeah. What's uh, lead times like for you guys on campers? You so, said you're taking 23 orders. Yeah, we're taking 2023 20, orders. Um, so this one right now, I think we're out till March on a new order. Okay. Um, and then our XTs, the, the teardrop style, uh, we're about 90 days. On oh, that. that's quick. Awesome. Well, yeah. thanks, Matt. Cool. That's killer stuff. Thank you. Very cool. Uh, I'm here with Ty from Backwoods Adventure Mods. And uh, Ty, what are you guys offering for the Ford Transit platform? And then also you have the front bumper and rear bumper. So you have a direct replacement bumper that is aluminum. It weighs about 50 pounds. Uh, it gives you a step to be able to get in the back of your van. It integrates in perfectly with the, with the actual Ford Transit uh, tow package. And then on the front bumper, we have a couple options. So on this one, you have the bull bar. Uh, it's big and beefy. A lot of people always say it's bigger. I don't want to put something on that's heavyweight. This right here is actually about 150 pounds. The bumper itself only weighs about 50 pounds. The heaviest portion of it is going to be your steel shackle mount area. So your steel shackle mount area that actually ties to the frame. So when you're looking at competitor bumpers, they all have very nice products. But something that's different about ours is the way that we have this set up. So when you're actually winching and pulling, you're pulling from the frame rather than pulling from an aluminum shackle mount welded to an aluminum bumper. Totally different concept, right? But you can get this with or without bull bar. And then we have a new uh, product offering uh, that is going to be our hidden winch. So actually you would keep your entire bumper on and then you would only take out the bottom portion, cut it out, and then everything slides in for it. I left out the receiver, but there is a receiver in there too. Oh, there is underneath that the is probably the biggest thing that people like to purchase this with. Maybe they don't want to add the weight of the winch because they're not looking to do that, but having that extra two inch receiver area down there, it gives them the application to be able to add the if you want to do the hammock, if you want to do bicycles, whatever it is, to be able to increase the number of things, especially when you have a family. Perfect. So, uh, Where can people find you online? Uh, you can go to backwoodadventuremods.com. Uh, you can go to our Instagram. It's the exact same thing. And if you need to contact me directly, it's ty, T-Y, at backwoodadventuremods.com. Thanks, man. Thank you Cheers. so much. Cool. Cheers. I'm here with Eric from Battleborn Batteries, and Eric is offering some awesome Made in America stuff. Eric, tell me about your battery. So we build lithium iron phosphate batteries in 12 and 24 volt packs. We assemble our batteries in Reno, Nevada. Essentially, you can see everything that we offer here on our, our table at Overland Expo. So really a number of different capacities available from a smaller 50 or 75 amp hour pack 
up to our 100 and our 270 amp hour packs. So we hope that there's something for everybody in every application. We build a lot of these batteries in both a standard and a heated version. So whether you're just a weekend warrior looking to get out in the summer, or somebody that wants to go out four seasons and have the power to go adventure, we should have you covered. Uh, basically, you can call us directly. So our, uh, our office is in Reno, Nevada. You can call us 775-622-3448. We build all our batteries there in Reno and we're happy to assist you with any power system questions or needs that you have. Awesome. And then uh, BattlebornBatteries.com? Yeah, www.BattlebornBatteries.com. We've got a full website with e-commerce. We've got a great blog with a lot of articles about DIY van builds, uh, RV installs, uh, really anything you could think of. Cool. Thanks, sir. Thank you, guys. Right, sure. So I'm here with Grady of Sub Overland, and uh, Grady does stuff for Suburbans. So tell me about what you guys do. Yeah, so I'm Grady of Sub Overland. We're in uh, Idaho. And we basically buy used Suburbans and we turn them into this. So we, so we source the used uh, Suburban and then we do all the mechanical work, tune up, you know, get it all ready. And I personally drive every rig for months, to get it ready for our clients. And then we kit it out to whatever model they want. So as you can see, we use a lot of wood. So we do like, you know, the wood platform, slide out drawers, you know, and then this is like your, your topper. And then on the interior, we have like the side cubbies. Uh, this is all half inch birch. Uh, and then, uh, so those are all insulated behind there. Okay. And then wooden ceiling, it's shiplap. Cool. And then we have the RV fan. It's kind of hard to see that, yeah. but. Next to the fan. And then there's, you know, a single light there. And then this is just, you know, a regular mattress. Uh -huh with you know a wooden platform underneath yeah that's perfect again really simple you know we we keep things very simple and our price point speaks for you know itself on that too in here this is we use ecoflow and so this is a uh, like a 200 amp hour one so one of their bigger units and we have a 100 watt panel up top that uh powers it all Dometic fridge up front in place of the center console, so we rip out the console. It is so nice. This even I just love driving these around just because I can always have my drinks. And anyway, it's just it's sweet having a fridge right next to you. And then over here, you know, this is just you know the Max Air fan you can see on all the RV stuff, and then light switch, and then the drawer. It goes both ways, so this extends out the platform so you can fold down the mattress to get the full 75 inches. And then you can have access, like I put my clothes right here usually, if I'm doing like quick road trips and stuff so I don't have to get out of the rig. So I just pass through, put up my window inserts and you're in bed. You, know, you don't have to make the bed, it's just like done. So there's some advantages to having like a bigger vehicle like this so you don't have to mess around with rooftop tents and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much like the interior. And then as far as, um, Vehicle wise, people always ask like, why a Suburban? Especially like here at the show, because it's full of, you know, Toyota and they're awesome. I love Toyota, I'm not trying to bash anyone, trust me. But these things, they're a really good drivetrain. Uh, we use 2000 to 2006 usually, 5.3 LS. I mean, I could go on and on about how awesome the drivetrain is, but parts are super available if it does break down and everyone knows how to work on them. And so it's just, it's a good sweet spot and they're affordable and they're available and so i just love this drivetrain and you know it's kind of kind of rare to see one especially here but yeah. it's been fun so if someone wants to pick up a suburban or they want to get a conversion or something like that how do they find you online so we just have website suboverland.com we do a bunch on youtube too so that's a good place to figure things out and instagram obviously the process is super simple it's just a 500 hour deposit and that reserves your spot. And then after that, we, you know, obviously in conversation. And then usually our wait list is like six months to a year. Okay. And then come and pick up your rig. So awesome. really simple process. That's great. I love it. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. All right. We'll see you around. Thanks for joining us here at Overland Expo Mountain West in our hometown of Loveland, Colorado. If you had fun with us on this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you at the next show. All of our, you know, it's like a used vehicle starts out. Oh man, very windy here one, today. One, one for the blue we can just